back to the recruiting camp, or the ID camp, after he's already told her no. I have no doubt in my mind that she's going to continue to go back until she's on that team. And that's the resilience that's another thing. This is another girl. I, I've only gotten to know Bryn really well this year. She's been in our club for a couple years. I've known her dad, I've known her mom. Um, and I just saw her as this quiet, cute, like passive girl. And I just, it's like, oh yeah, she's cool. She's got some good skills. And, and I'm getting to know her as the season goes on. First thing she says to me after about three weeks of practice, she goes, Coach, you're playing me on the way. I'm going to college play in the center of the Oh, okay. And I thought about that. A lot of coaches will just say, you know what, you'll play where I play you. I said, I really, really appreciated the maturity of her to come to me and talk to me. So I said, you know what, it's about the players, it's not about me. And I want to honor that. I want to give her that opportunity to earn that spot. And Brynn has been a tenacious player in the center of the midfield for us. And if you notice, we have quite a rotation going on in there. It's crowded. So those players have had to sacrifice a little bit of time to share with each other. But she goes in and yeah, she is cute, but she is feisty and tenacious. <laughs> and we talked about resilience. Britt Anderson is going on to play college soccer. Thank you. And David Herrick, thank you. Trevor Den, wherever you're at, thank you. Marty Klott, thank you. And whoever else I'm missing, thank you for your help in the academy. But McKenna Weisner, when I first met McKenna, I think she came to one of my original camps when I first started working with her. And you could tell from day one that she just absolutely loved the game of soccer. She loved the game of soccer. Watched her develop throughout the years, play in different positions, contribute to her team in different ways and she's a very good player but the way that she contributes the most is the way that she pulls people in her personality she truly truly brought this group together as a team and if you ever see McKenna Weiser with a funnel and I'll be I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you in the beginning of the season you don't you don't know this in the beginning of the season high school coach because I had never coached McKenna other than a little bit in the academy. And I had to say, hey Jeff, I don't know if I'm understanding McKenna the right way. I don't know if she's just cocky, or she's funny, <laughs> or I don't know how to take her. And as I kind of got to know her a little bit, as I got to see what she does to the team, it's just she just loves life. And she is a great teammate, a great kid to coach. McKenna's going to play in her mural soccer, I hope, but she's going on to Pepperdine Let's go, Michaela Day. Michaela Day, come on up here. <laughs> if anybody has had a rough six months in the world of soccer, it's Michaela. Okay. Traditionally, they allow us to play U19 teams in the U18 division in Oregon U soccer. So we go and we do our tryouts. And we have, uh, we form our teams based on the way that we believe that we're supposed to be forming our teams. Then they bracket the teams, and we find out that they're not allowing U19, they form our own U19 division. I've been here for nine years, it's the first time I've ever done it. I laid awake at night. First of all, I had a lot of arguments with Oregon Eve Soccer. Um, those of you that know me well enough know that. I'm not afraid to fight every once in a while. Um, so I had some arguments. I, I, I uh, spewed some maybe 30 words that shouldn't have been said, but I lost. 
and I had to go to Michaela and I had to tell her that she could only play in Vegas and she could only play here. It's probably one of the hardest conversations I've ever had to have with a player. And she looks at me and she goes, I completely understand her and I still work out with the team. She's been at virtually every practice, working hard, day in and day out. Michaela sent, signed a letter a couple weeks, a couple months ago to move on to play Division I soccer at Portland State. This past week, unexpectedly, the Portland State head coach stepped down. I'm leaving her decision in flux. I'm sorry, I don't know if you want me to talk about this. Kind <laughs> right. of leaving her decision in flux, and we're going to talk about this early coming weeks and try to help guide her. But there's no doubt in my mind that with her personality, that with her work, her work rate, and her determination, she's going to end up playing college soccer, and she's going to be very, very successful. <laughs> I'm also very candid as well. Going into the season, as I'm as I'm looking at what we have, looking at where we're at, I knew Caitlin from the academy. I didn't really get to see her play in high school too much because I only got to I only got to get to one or two games this past year. I just wasn't sure where we were at with the goalkeeper. I didn't know. We had Caitlin. And we, was, we had one other girl, but she quit before we even got started. I just wasn't sure. And it took about 10 minutes into the first half against our game against Eugene, where she just came up big and big and big. And I realized right there that we have a goalkeeper. But what was more important that I found out over the course of the season is that not only do we have a goalkeeper, we have a leader. Right? She's the one in the huddle saying to be quiet. She's the one when I said, the other night at practice, if we win this, we play at, I was trying to say, if we, we would either play at 8 or 11 on Monday. And she, no, we're playing at 11. No, we're playing at 11. Don't you? She is the, she is the voice. She is the competitive fire in our group. And, um, you know, it's been a pleasure to have her. It's been a pleasure to get to know you. Caitlin Weber is going on to play college soccer at Lane College. Um, favorites. We don't have favorites, but I do have ones that make me laugh. <laughs> so come on up here, Mo. I remember, I just told, I just told Chris Henry, he, uh, he says, um, Mo was pretty composed when she got up there to take that penalty. Kind of so basically, if you know this kid, you'll never be a more confident person. Not just a confident athlete. Confident person than Megan Cow. There was no doubt in my mind that she was going to bury that pick today. And again, I go all the way back to the academy. There was never a time, never a time where she had an opportunity to take a penalty kick, take a, take a shot with the game on the line, do whatever she had to do. It just comes naturally to her. Right? Um, and I remember, again, going back to the crazy, crazy. Uh, introduction of our academy, doesn't matter if you win, play a bunch of positions, blah, 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 all the stuff to this day that people still hate. If I've been here long enough, they don't have the goal to come up and tell me about it. Right? Um, <laughs> um, but I remember at that time, we still had Bend in our league, and Eugene in our league, and a couple of other teams from up north in our league. I remember the one time most group went over to Bend, and they got shellacked like 